Park, Houston, Dynamo, Portland, Timbers, Sporting, Kansas, Los Angeles, Galaxy, Beach Pass, Toronto, FC, Salt Lake, Chicago Fire, Columbus Crew, FC, Dallas, York Red Bulls, Pitch Pass, your all-access credential to the people that matter in MLS. Here's your host, Greg Roach. Why, hello there. Welcome to another edition of Pitch Pass. Have you been to PitchPass.com? You should. It's all revamped for the 2013 season. It looks very, very, very pretty. And I invite you to check it out. And while you're there, subscribe to the podcast in some way. There's many chances and places for you to do it. If you choose to do it through iTunes, I'm going to keep reminding you, please rate the podcast. Leave a comment. That'd be even better, but I don't want to push my luck. At the very least, though, tell a couple of your MLS-loving friends about this here podcast so that maybe we can, you know, spread the word a little bit. Got a good episode for you lined up from CenterlineSoccer.com. The always insightful Robert Jonas will be on to talk about the San Jose Earthquakes as they get ready to start their season, as everybody in MLS gets ready to start their season, including the Columbus Crew. They start their season on Saturday, March 2nd in California, Home Depot Center against Chivas USA. The man between the sticks for that match will be Andy Grunebaum, and he joins us right now on Pitch Pass. Hi, Andy. How are you, sir? Doing well. How about yourself? I'm great. And now, now I'm sure you probably get this all the time but this is so this is the first time we're actually calling like a, a landline a hotel thing so when i when i called i had to get patched through to your room and they said well who is it and i give your name and they're like Goo goo goony. Yeah, it's, it's a nightmare. And and actually, my uh, my wife went from Sims to Greenabom. Oh, jeez. And, and her uh, my wife's sister went from Sims to Scheffelbein. So wow. I'm sure, I'm sure the whole family's just a little torn up there, but it well, is what it is. Let me ask you a question, because my last sure. name is Roach, and we get that that gets a lot of uh, a lot of stares when we go out. Like you know, we have reservations or anything. Do you use a, an easier name? When you make reservations, because we use Grant. That's our that's our that's our our dinner reservation name. Um, actually, yeah, I use Green. Oh, okay. So there, you, you do use a pseudonym. Yeah, we uh, we use Green just because uh, you know, I mean, it, if you try and do Green a bomb over you know reservations, it's a nightmare yes. over the phone. They have to type it in four or five times, and then also, um, you know, my friends for the longest time just call me G bomb because. You take out the middleman. There's no, there's no spelling errors, you know. So, so you're green. Uh, yeah. So yeah. when when you're on the road, this this will, the, the it'll keep all of the the opposing fans from storming your room. Just know it's under green. <laughs> uh, I think you're mistaken. I, this is the wrong sport. Oh, oh. I don't oh, think we have any oh. uh, opposing fans that are uh, getting too crazy at hotels. Not, none that I've encountered anyway. So, And if they if they try and get to me, they should raise their standards. <laughs> so. so you you guys right now are in Orlando. You're wrapping up for the uh, Disney Pro Soccer Classic. And um, I, guess, I guess the big question I have to ask you while you're on the road, does the bunny accompany you? <laughs> I wish, man. It's been it's been almost uh, I don't know. I can't even tell you how many weeks it's been since I've seen her. But um, I it's it's just you know people say it's just a bunny, but uh, I mean it's my pet and she's amazing. And I've been FaceTiming with uh, my wife and my bunny almost every night, and uh, I'm dying to get home to see her. Um, and so yeah, it's it's been it's been miserable, but. Um, Hopefully she remembers who uh, who her dad is, and and you know we can uh, we can take time to you know uh, bond again when I, I get home. I was gonna say Andy because when you first started your answer, I'm thinking to myself, does he think I mean his wife when I said bunny? Because that's the way you're talking, as if this is a treasured loved one that you've chosen to spend the rest of your life with. It uh, she as long uh, we just we're giving her the best home, you know. They don't have like the longest. Like, they live five to eight years and. Uh, we, we've already talked about how devastating that's going to be when we have to cross that bridge, but, um, you know, we won't think about that, but yeah, actually, you know, I, I talk her, I talk about her like she's my daughter. Um, I'm very protective of her and, uh, and she's, she, brings, she's brought us so much joy to be honest with you. I'd never thought like I'd ever say that about a bunny, but, uh, she's been amazing. And, um, honestly though, uh, I was People people ask me all the time, you know, do, do they act like a what do what do what do they do? I mean, it's a bunny rabbit. Yeah. But she thinks she's a dog. To be honest with you, she thinks she's a dog, and she she rolls over sometimes. She 
Uh, I mean, she's just incredible. She's what is her hilarious. name? What What is her name? Her name is Rue. Like R O, like kangaroo. Oh, like kangaroo. Yeah, from the yeah. Uh, from the Winnie the Pooh. Yep. Nice, nice. And the other thing is, my my parents. You know, my brother and I are both married, and um, they're worried that they're not going to have any grandchildren because <laughs> both my brother and myself have bunnies as well. Like my brother's wife had a bunny going into their relationship, and um, they actually had two, and one of them died, and then they still have one, and they have a dog. So my mom's. Think she's gonna be stuck with grand bunnies. <laughs> your your mom and dad are probably thinking, what did we do to instill this love of bunnies in our sons? Uh, it was just it's just one of those things that where both of our wives grew up with bunnies or had bunnies, and um, you know, just I was told a long time ago if we were ever gonna get a pet, it would be a bunny. We're not getting a dog, and and so I kind of just compromised with it. I I love animals, and so. Uh, that was the biggest thing was I got to the breaking point where I wanted a uh, pet so bad that I just went to the Ohio State Fair and, and found this one. So, Well, uh, take solace in the fact this time next week you'll be back in your bunny's arms. <laughs> I will do that, <laughs> trust me. Now, the, the, the season is coming up. It's quickly approaching. Uh, do you guys feel that you're ready after your time in Florida? Yeah, I think we've had a successful run here. Uh, we've we've had you know a good string of victories, and things have been not necessarily the smoothest at times. But I think uh, with all the new players we have in camp, and with all the turnover that's happened, I'd say it's been a success. And we just have to carry that on in, into the uh, regular season. Your team last year, the the crew. F- I think definitely flew under the radar. Kind of people put him to put you guys to the side at the beginning of the season. And then once you picked up uh, Higuain, everything started to click for you guys. And by the end of the season, you were the team. I thought that, that nobody really wanted to play is, is that kind of attitude and mentality. Are you going to be able to transfer that from the end of 2012 into 2013? Yeah, I think so. I think we learned a lot from what happened last year and not making the playoffs and uh, just being, being able to close out, you know, if we were able to maybe close out one more game, we would have been there. And that's, you know, that's a tough pill to swallow, you know, a long off season and then uh, right back into it for this year. So I think, you know, we can take some of those things from last year and, and sort of that mentality where we were right there. We we're, like you said, flying under the radar. And, and no, I don't think anybody did want to play us. I think, um, you know, early on we weren't conceding very many goals. And then when, uh, when you know Pipa, when Federico Higuain, and uh, <laughs> and uh, you know Jairo came aboard, we were just we were scoring goals, but we were leaking goals. And so I think um, hopefully we've been we've been able to find that you know consistency on both ends, and that'll just make us even more dangerous uh, when we're when we're playing for the zero on our end and, and they're scoring goals up top. So. Well, that's a great jump off point to a question that I got for you on Twitter, and the, sure. the question was. Um, are you a member of the good keeper, no no defending club like Dan Kennedy? I'm sh- I know for a fact you're going to say I'm not a member of that club, but defend your back line. I mean, look at look at all the uh, look at all the turnover we had on that back line last year. I mean, we we did give up you know a lot of shots and a lot of chances, but at the same time. You know, I wouldn't trade those guys for anything. It, it's tough to come in and out of the lineup. You had guys stepping up and, and playing hard and, and a lot of injuries, consistent injuries. And one guy would come back, another one, another one would, uh, would go by the wayside again. And it would, you just never had that continuity. And I think that's a big factor. And uh, plus, you know, over my, over my career, from college to club, I've always played on teams that, you know, give up a lot of shots and it just it's more fun for me but uh <laughs> at the same time you know those guys really did the best that they could with the you know situation with Chad going in and out and and et cetera. it's just it's tough when you don't have that continuity you you know you do your best to fill the fill the gaps and we do have the players to you know, step in and, and do the job, and I think they proved that last year, especially. So, where are you guys at? I'm talking about the defense and the back line specifically, as far as health wise, uh, at this point in the preseason, as you get ready for your opening match. I think we're we're pretty healthy right now. I think we're finding our groove as far as you know, consistently putting out a back four that has been starting with you know Tyson and and Glauber and Chad and uh, you know Josh Williams can play either in the center or outright and he's proven you know he's 
he's an unbelievable asset to the team because, you know, of that ability to play in either position. And, um, and we have other guys that can fill in that have done it, that have spent some time on the first team. And um, But right now I think everyone's healthy. Everything's, re- everything's ready to go. I think we just have to continue to gel over our last game here and, and then our last uh, few training sessions leading into the regular season. And I think we'll be fine. He's kind of an X factor, but you've played with him now for a few weeks. What can we expect from Glauber uh, as a member of Columbus Crew and in MLS? Well, he's just another big body that I think his positioning's you know been great so far. I think he's he's got some leadership qualities, and uh, I think he's a good complement to Chad there. You got you know a couple twin towers in the back there that that really kind of use their body well. And I, I, Chad, when when he's healthy, he's obviously the best defender in the league and I think Glauber could be right there with him I think it's just going to take some time to for those two to gel and I think so far so good I, I really enjoy what's going on in front of me and I think they're going to make my lives a lot easier are they similar players uh in a way in certain ways they are I and mean, Chad's just a big body and he's yeah. got a huge head you know um, <laughs> the ball just finds him and uh unfortunately sometimes when he's not looking the ball has found his head which is something we're we're trying to avoid but um with uh with Glauber though you know I'm still trying to find figure him out a little bit and it seems to me that they're both you know positionally pretty sound and Chad Chad's a unbelievable one-on-one defender and and so far Glauber's been a monster in the air as well as Chad so in in some respects they're very similar and then in other respects you know they kind of they kind of have different sort of bodies and different kind of uh you know skill sets as well I was looking up some videos of you, and uh, the first one that comes up is from thecrew.com, and it's a it's a vote for you, and so it's a nice music video uh, <laughs> set set to the sweet tones of MC Hammer's "Here Comes the Hammer." Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I, I just in my head I think to myself uh, as they're putting the video together, they probably got a couple of songs in there, they're pretty good, and then you come in and go, "It sounds great, but I kind of need Here Comes the Hammer." I mean, I I am the Hebrew Hammer. I need MC Hammer. Here comes the Hammer, and I, I'm not going to sign off on this video unless you make it. Here comes the Hammer. Is that what happened behind the scenes? That is, that is not what happened <laughs> at all. Um, you know that that nickname has uh, followed me since college, and uh, it, it's just funny that I, I don't even know how it ended up here because I thought it would just be dead and buried when I um, you know got drafted by the crew and, and left college because it was just something my roommates came up with from that movie, um, The Hebrew Hammer, and and so all that stuff is great, and I, I had no idea that was you know going on, but it, it's great. But you know at the same time, it's it's like. I, you know, you just got to move on. And, and last year, what happened last year happened last year. And I, I just really want to focus on having a, another good year. But if if I had to pick a, a different song, I, yes. Trust what me, what I would your would. what would your new song be? Because I think it, everything you just said could be summed up in a they used MC Hammer for my theme music. That and then that explains everything about wanting to leave the nickname in the past, wanting to put it away. That could all be summed up with. They used MC Hammer for my theme music. No, actually, uh, you know that nickname has led to some pretty funny chants from the from our our supporters section, and and they get wittier every year. So <laughs> uh, I've actually kind of enjoyed it, and I I think my parents have enjoyed it, and it's kind of just grown. And um, you know, I I don't now it's not. It used to be we're like, oh, well, that's funny. Where'd you hear that? But now it's you know it's kind of been uh, you know consistent over the years. So uh, you know it's it's no problem for me, but um. You know, as far as the songs go, I'm I'm a pretty big, uh, pretty big music fan myself, and there's so many to choose from. I, it's probably on what day you catch me that I'd want you know whatever song. So probably something from Slash though. Nice, like Slash's yeah. Snake Pit or Guns N' Roses Slash. Like uh, Slash and Miles Kennedy. Nice, fantastic. Yeah. One, yep. I always say Miles Kennedy, one of the best vocals, one of the best voices in rock music. It's it's been that way for a long time, and uh, and actually one of my best friends from high school uh, told me about him before I even realized he was doing an album with Slash, or you know on the first album Slash came out with with all, where he collaborated with all those other artists. But um, yeah, I mean this guy is incredible. It's, yeah, 
uh, it was it was really fun. I went out to L.A. to visit my brother, and I was I saw Slash and the and Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators out there, and it was one of the best concerts I've ever been to. Have you heard his Alter Bridge stuff? Uh, yes, okay. I have. Uh, I have definitely heard his Alter Bridge. Have have the DVD concert from. <laughs> Hello, Miles uh, Kennedy's good, biggest good fan. It's it's good stuff. All right, so uh, I wanted to give you a second because this this was kind of breaking news, and that's the Will Hesmer uh, retirement. Um, I want to get your thoughts on Will and, and you know where your head is at with him uh, retiring. Yeah, sure. I, I think you know I've I've known sort of from talking to Will myself that he was thinking about retiring, and um, he's always kind of had you know a backup plan, and he's one of the smartest guys I've ever met. Actually, he's just really bright guy, um, very knowledgeable in all different aspects. Um, of life and and so he's a very good source of knowledge for me and anytime I ever had a question about anything financial or anything else you know I kind of uh, have steered to Will first and so he's been a great friend and a great teammate and um, someone who I've learned a lot from over the years about you know being a good professional and um, you know just really gonna miss him around the locker room even though we were competing he's you know, a great, great locker room guy to have, and and uh, and an admirable fantasy football player. Oh, admirable! Yes, that means you beat him. No, uh, I I did win the league. Uh, what's up, humble brag? Did, but <laughs> I'd say, as far as consistent consistency goes, he's he's been the better consistent owner. Um, you know, I've had better teams on paper, but he's he's really over the years been more consistent. You're so, hot. I do have a championship to my name. I was going to say he he doesn't. Your highs have been higher. That's all. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. All. And then so. the the other news, and I love that this is doesn't seem to be a big deal as as it pertains to the sport is your former teammate Robbie Rogers uh, coming out and saying that he is gay. And I, again, I I love the fact that it, it within the the MLS community, at least the players that that tweet, which you don't, by the way, but it seems to be the general thing is fine, cool. Let's move on. Why do you think that it's not a huge situation in MLS locker rooms as it kind of was trying to be played up as we got into Super Bowl week as far as the NFL is concerned? Yeah, sure. I, you know, I don't know. It's a hot-button topic for some reason. And, and, you know, whether it's for religious reasons or otherwise, um, it's just something that, you know, is is a hot-button issue. And, and it's one of those things where, for me personally, it's just – if I just kind of have always been taught to be a good person and it doesn't really matter, you know, with, I think religion causes a lot of problems in a lot of different ways. And, and so does, you know, uh, that other stuff. And, and I just kind of was raised to be a good person and, you know, and just try and try and do that and good things will follow. And it, Robbie was just that he was a good person. He is a good person. And, um, you know, and so this news is just, it, it just doesn't matter to me, and I'm sure a lot of other guys feel the same way. And there may there may be a lot of other guys that don't feel that way and just are just going to keep quiet. But you know, I just think that be who you want to be, and and that's sort of how I've always you know just just be a good person. And Robbie is, and and the rest will follow. So without breaking think, without breaking the sanctity of the uh, the locker room, was it a surprise to you? Um, I mean, yeah, it, it, I, I'm not going to lie. It was definitely a surprise, but it was just one of those things where actually I found out when a you know, local reporter from Columbus traveled with us asked me about it, and, and I just kind of was like, oh, oh, okay, well, yeah, I mean, whatever. You know, I, that's, I just kind of did a double take, and yeah. that was it. So I, it, it really wasn't a big deal. It's just the, the thing about it is, you know, obviously Robbie's a high-profile guy, and um, – and, you know, it would make news whether he was or not, you know, as an athlete. But the the thing is, is it's nobody's business. It's it's something that, you know, we obviously it'll make big news and this and that. But in the end, you know, we're talking about a human being. And, and you know, for anybody to say something negative about that is just is wrong, in my opinion. And it, that's the beauty of, uh, I guess, America is, you know, you have your own opinion and. Um, you know, I just think that Robbie's a great guy and it doesn't matter how he feels about anything. You know, he's, he's been a great ambassador for Columbus over the years. He helped us win a championship and, and, uh, really and truthfully, you know, those are the things I'm going to remember about Robbie. So, well, the biggest thing you remember about this Orlando preseason trip is, will it be medieval times? <laughs> I 
ever since Cable Guy, I've always wanted to go. And, uh, you know, a group of us went, and I'll tell you what, it was a blast. We had... We were actually put with the Yellow Knights, so it was like black well, that's and yellow perfect. colors. And and the guy actually, I know it's predetermined. Sorry to you know uh, ruin that for everyone, but um, <laughs> the the guy actually won, and so it was coincidence. So we think you know MLS Cup might not be too far fetched after all. Um, you know, it, it's it may be a sign from you know from the gods, if you will, from the Game of Thrones. You know, we'll, we'll see. But uh, it was a great time, and I'm pretty sure if we go back, the Blue Knight might retire. We were in this guy's head all night. So, I don't, I don't, I don't really appreciate you using uh, the Pitch Pass podcast as a platform to to spoil things, Andy. I'm not a fan of that. Okay. <laughs> I know. I apologize. I apologize. People, future people who are planning on trips to medieval times are just they're hanging their head now with one tear going. It's fixed. What? I'll tell you what, though, it's, it, it's people know wrestling is for you know a lot of things, and and they still go. So I'm sure. True. Sure it'll be all right. So I, I, the reason I ask you is is because of the now fantastically awesome picture that is making the rounds on the internet. Uh, give us the backstory on the picture. Well, there's a few. I'm not sure uh, all of them have made it out there oh. know, on, the, on the internet, but there are definitely more. And uh, you know, we we took one as we uh, as we entered. You know, and and a bunch of the guys actually purchased it so i i can't say that i contributed to that but um but yeah a bunch of the guys purchased the one we took as a group and I, it was it was said before it even started that no one was going to smile we were going to have these you know sort of uh <laughs> you know mean looks and going on and, and a couple guys didn't get the memo so that kind of ruined it but there's some better ones than that we actually took a photo with the king himself and we were all um bowing down on our knee and uh that that was a good one and uh also with the yellow knight the the victor so. of course so Definitely. i got so i have to ask you uh, about two people who was a little too eager to throw the crown on and who did we have to really twist the arm to get the crown on <laughs> i don't think you had to twist anybody we <laughs> get uh, me that we crown were we were in <laughs> um we were definitely ready we knew, we were looking for him and uh and so I think who was probably most excited? I, Garrick, Ger, Eric Garrick put his on pretty quick. I'm not <laughs> gonna lie. Um, he was pretty excited. And then yeah, I mean we all pretty much followed suit pretty quickly. Um, but the girl, there was a there was a tiny, probably like 13 year old girl sitting on the row below us, and she was. We were giving it to these knights pretty good, but she was yelling off with his head. <laughs> And so uh, we all kind of just stopped what we were chanting and, like, looked at each other and were like, wow, this girl is serious. Like, she <laughs> wants to see some bloodshed. So um, it, w it made for a very interesting night of people watching and also, um, you know, some good, uh, some good jousting as well. So the San Jose Earthquakes last year embraced the Goonies. This year, if, if Columbus wins the MLS Cup, we are, we are putting it all down to the Yellow Knights of the Orlando Medieval Times. Oh, for sure. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna come back every year. If that's if we win it, we're gonna come back and cheer on the Yellow Knight every year here in Orlando, whether we're at the tournament or not. We'll just take some time off, you know, and and come down. And when this guy eventually is king, you know, he'll just remember us for all the times. We'll probably get VIP seating every time. <laughs> that's awesome, Andy. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your time in Florida, and good luck as the beginning of the season is uh, just a week or so away. Absolutely. Appreciate it. And a reminder, the crew open up on March 2nd. That's a Saturday in Los Angeles against Chivas USA.